I have been a minimalist for nine years and today I'm gonna to take you with me. I'm gonna go through my whole house from front to back and I'm gonna show you how much I can find to declutter. I'm gonna get started here in my main bedroom. I have a one bag for donations, one bag for trash and a basket, which is what I use for things that don't live in whatever space we're in. So I can take them around with me and return them to their homes if needed or give them a new home if they don't have one. I've actually never counted my decluttering before. This is the first time and you totally shouldn't worry about the numbers. But if it gives you a little push, I'm actually wondering if I could find find 100 items to declutter. I'm not sure if that is a little optimistic, but let's find out. I am starting in what I like to call my junk hole, which is basically just where all of the random things that don't have a place to live where they live. So I actually think junk holes are totally okay if you need a place for something to live temporarily or if it's just a random thing that you need to hold on to for a little while, having a home for it, even if it is a junk hole, is totally cool. But then when it's time to declutter, it's a great place to just go and get rid of that stuff that you don't actually need that's just been hanging out there for a little while. I'm also going through all of our clothes drawers. And as I'm doing this, you'll see I'm not actually trying to keep anything tidy. I'm just working through it because at the moment my mind is totally focused on what I've got to declutter so you if you were easily sidetracked like I am this is a great strategy to use because you're so focused on the decluttering you're not getting dragged down 20 million different paths and it also like keeps you really focused on what are those items that I've been thinking about that I don't need anymore what haven't I touched in a long time and then grabbing those out and then just shoving everything back in I do always say it's possible to clean without decluttering but it's way harder to declutter with without cleaning just because of the nature of it you can go through your wardrobe your clothes drawer any drawer in your house and as you're decluttering ultimately it usually looks cleaner and you put it back in a more efficient way but if you're focused on decluttering it's totally fine to just go through like a little raccoon in a trash can and get rid of the stuff you don't want talk about how it's really important to be respectful of other people's things and you will need to do this on a per person basis. My husband really does not care if I go through his closet and make decisions. In this video you can actually see he's standing behind the camera so I can ask him questions and talk him into things but if your husband or partner is not down for that that's totally okay but maybe you could just be the cheerleader and sort of assist them rather than you being the one doing it but whatever it is as long as you're being respectful decluttering can totally be a family affair all right guys so i just went through my closet and this is my declutter pile now some of this stuff i really do like i just find that i don't tend to wear it maybe it's that I'm just sick of it. it. I don't have other things that go with it. But either way, I feel really good about getting rid of these items. So I'm going to do a count now and let you know what it is. So clothing, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, 13 pieces of clothing to go. And then I've just got some like bits and bobs here. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Now this is one of those little miniature house things. My sister gave it to me because she didn't think she could do it. And then when I opened up, it was way too many pieces, way too overwhelming. So I'm gonna let this go and that will be 21. 
Okay guys, we are now in my son's room, which also kind of doubles as where most of the toys live, as well as all of our homeschool stuff. So I'm gonna go through his cupboards. I'm gonna have a look and see what I can find. I do always let my kids know that they can make the final decision, but I find having me go through it first is the best way. There is totally a place for pulling out every single item and reorganizing it, and I definitely do that sometimes, but there is also a time where it's okay to just go through and get those really obvious things out of the way. You can always come back and redo, have a look again once you've been over it. It's like an onion. Once you've taken the first layer off, those other layers are much faster. But knowing that you can just go through, open a drawer, see what's got to go, and leave everything else the way it is, is a absolute game changer. So guys, this is everything that I have that's leaving from this room. Some of it will be trash because it's like half used or like a little memory game that came from the back of a box. But just for fun, I'm gonna count it anyway. So we have a very good dress up box but I went through and there was a couple of things that either are a little bit worse for wear or maybe don't fit anymore. So those are all going, but I'm so excited to see how much we got from this room. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Hamish parted with his trains a little while ago. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 30 items plus like the 21 from in my bedroom. That gives us a total of 51 items so far. I'm gonna need a bigger bag. You're gonna need a bigger boat. I am now in my daughter's room and I asked them if they wanted to help me and they were like, nah, mom, whatever you decide, we'll just look through. So here I am. I am going to go through their folded clothes first and then I'll have a quick look at what's in their wardrobes. They did both just kind of get some new things. So I kind of need to just work out what they're going to keep, what they're going to let go of. But I'm confident that we will find things that are ready to be decluttered. wasn't too much to be decluttered from this room, but I did still find things. I'm going to do a count with you. It's mainly just some clothes, some books that we either duplicates or they've sort of grown out of. I am still always shocked that it wasn't that long ago that I went through all the girls' clothes, but we still found stuff. Let's get counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, I don't know if this counts, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and this ball from that is from the devil. It is so hard and it's a bouncy ball. It's just, it's a nightmare. Will be 26. I'm just keeping track in my head. So I think I was at 51 before and then adding another 26. So we are getting closer and closer to our 100 item goal. These are two of my doom piles. So one was sitting out in the garage and one has sort of just been floating around the house. I'm gonna quickly go through these. I think a lot of this stuff is just outside of its home, but I bet there are some things to declutter in here as well. So I'm gonna get started on looking through these. 
If you are a doom piler like me, going through and finding items to declutter out of your doom piles is a great way. I actually have a whole video about doom piles, but one of my favorite things to remember is that by decluttering, it's like the cheat code. You don't have to do anything else other than donate it or chuck it in the trash. So if you struggle with doom piles, just go in with the mindset of decluttering first and then work your way back from there. And you know, it just makes makes the process so much faster. This is my pile of things that are staying and just need to go back to their homes. There's still some little odds and ends, but this is my pile of things I'm gonna let go of. It's things like some clothes that we got given that just didn't fit, these goggles that none of my kids like the feeling of. We have got given some bed spreads and we're keeping part of the set, but we didn't need all these extra things. So let's get to counting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. We were already at 77. So that brings us up to 88. Is that right? My maths is terrible. So we are getting so close to 100. I feel like if I push myself a little bit further, I can probably find some things. I went through my kitchen not that long ago, but there are some things in like the top cupboards that I haven't looked at for a while. So I'm going to go check them out and see if I can find anything there. I did not think I had anything to get rid of in my kitchen because I'd gone through it just recently, but I didn't go through those top cupboards. So I went through them and my drawers and I found these three water bottles that we don't really use anymore, a lid for a cup we don't have, an old paint thing. These I bought from my robot vacuum, but they were so terrible. They like didn't actually work. So I've got three of those. I also found this fork in my drawer and it doesn't match my other fork. So it kind of drives me bonkers. And also this a tiny knife. My kids are all old enough to use big people knives now. So I didn't need it. And this little bowl that I've lost the lid for. All of these things came from my kitchen. And so we were at 88 before. So that's 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. Guys, I am sure I could go around my house and find one more thing for you, but I am so surprised at how having, like counting the amount of items that I was going to declutter made a big difference and kind of pushed me to make decisions a bit faster, to let go of items. So if I can do this after nine years of minimalism, I know that you guys out there can get rid of these items too. I would love to hear from you down in those comments. Let me know how many items you get rid of.